In this section, we want to show you doing a curved jam where the form is outside the bag, and we're going to do a couple of things. One is we're going to show you uh, doing a curved jam and how you can take it off the form, and it will hold its shape with the uh, assistance of a bar clamp across the bottom. The other thing is uh, when you're doing a, a curved jam with a tight radius, when you bend your your setup, you'll get wrinkles on the other side. And it could be enough on a small radius to uh, give you the wrong dimension. So if you're going to do it on, the, on a small piece, what you want to do is use the inside of the form or the female section and push it into the form. Because when you do it that way, the top side is smooth and it'll go tight against the bag and you'll get uh, a much more accurate piece. It just depends on the, the needs. What I'm going to do is uh, we're just going to clamp this up, pull vacuum. I'm not going to bother to show you gluing up. You've seen the, uh, how to glue. You certainly know how to glue. Uh, and show you that we can take it off the form uh, once it's uh, under vacuum. Get this last clamp on. Uh, as you know, if you're, if you're using the uh, bending plywood, it's pretty uh, easy to deal with, unlike uh, the hardwoods. Plus, you can buy it in eighth inch lamination, so you don't have to uh, resaw your popular or whatever you're going to use. Now, we'll just use pull vacuum. And once you get it under vacuum, if you're going to leave it on the form, one of the things you uh, want to do is to remove all b uh, the two bottom clamps. And what that does for you is it allows it, the piece to relax, and you'll get a perfect curve. And where you don't have clamps, obviously you don't get a flat spot. Any of you who've done this with just clamps know that every time you put a clamp on a curved area, you can end up with a flat spot. And depending where it's going, it has to be sanded out. Now, uh, this is relaxed just a hair, but uh, it's got a nice uh, smooth curve to it. And what we're going to do is just uh, remove these clamps. All right, we just put our bar clamp across here, tighten it up a hair. And then we can pull this thing out. And all you want to do at this point is measure across your piece and adjust this to give you uh, the dimension that you want. Maybe make it a little tighter, just allow for a little bit of spring back. Like I said earlier, this is pretty easy because it's bending plywood. Now, what we've done is we've uh, resawn some uh, popular and we're just going to uh, finish gluing it up, and then we'll assemble it and hook it onto the frame. What to do is uh, put a couple of screws in here to hold the uh, material from sliding uh, around. Now I can only put it in the center because when I drape it on my form, it has to be able to slide. And of course, if I put a screw here and here, it can't slide. And if this is a top of a jam or whatever, it won't show. Uh, if you can't do it because it's going to show, obviously you don't do that. Next, we're going to put our breather material on. And again, I'm just going to put some tape to help hold it in place. Now, when you use tape, don't put the sticky side down against the wood because it's very aggressive. And when you press it and you take it off, you're going to be ripping the fibers. So the first wraparound, what I do is I put the sticky side down, out, and I come around and made it up here and then put a twist in it. Now you can go around and you'll have the uh, sticky side down against the, uh, the tape itself. And we'll do it on both ends and we're not going to make it very tight 
because again it has to slide. Now I'm going to slide it into the bag. We want to make sure our connector is hitting on our mesh material. The mesh is there so that the air from the other end of the bag can travel down to the connector. Okay, what I have, I've hooked up my other bag. Now remember, I have the other bag still hooked up to it. So I want to turn this one off. And I'm just going to draw a little vacuum on this bag just to tighten it up uh, a little bit to keep it from being uh, floppy. I'll open up the other one. You'll hear the unit cycling on and off a little bit, and that's just uh, because it has a, uh, a leak in it. And that's why you have to keep them hooked up all the time. Now I'll take a minute and I'll, I'll set up my uh, form. Okay, this one, tighten these. And I'm checking, and I'm, uh, I'm up uh, right against my form, so I'm okay. Now I'm going to open up. Apply some vacuum, turn my other one off. We're squeezing with 1,800 pounds per square foot. And the advantage of vacuum, it's even in uniform pressure. Everywhere along here is being squeezed with the same pressure as opposed to a point source with a clamp right here and right there. And any of you who have done this with clamps know anytime you put the clamp on a flat spot, uh, you can develop a flat spot. So what we're going to do now is take all of these top clamps off except the bottom two. And what that does is this thing will relax just a hair and you'll get a nice symmetrical curve. We don't need the clamps anymore to hold it in place because vacuum is holding it. And we'll leave the clamps on the bottom and uh, we'll come back uh, in about four hours, uh, take it out, and we'll see how it looks. One. Okay. Okay, this is set up. We're just going to take it off. Here it is out of the bag. And I just want you to note that uh, we had the right amount of glue. We just had enough squeeze out so you can see that uh, we had glue uh, in our glue line all the way around. One of the things you'll learn is you're going to use less glue when you use the bag because if you put too much in, it's just going to squeeze out and make a mess in the bag. Piece that's been sanded and trimmed up uh, and squared up and so on. Uh, looking at it closely, there's no voids in the glue line. It's good, good and tight. Uh, and now you see how you can do multiple uh, jams using the same form uh, and just run multiple bags off of one uh, vacuum system. And then finally, when you're doing something new, always do a dry run. Make sure it's going to work before you uh, invest the, the, the time and the money, especially in an expensive veneer, and find out uh, that things aren't quite right. If you ever have any questions about any of these techniques or would like to see something new, uh, call us and we'd be glad to discuss it with you.